Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters, welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the Akhi panel. So today we traveled all the way to Saudi Arabia to meet our very good friend Abu Abdul Aziz, who is a student at King Saud University. Alhamdulillah, he has the opportunity to sit with the major scholars of our time, including Sheikh Saleh Al Fawzan, Sheikh Shithri, and the other major scholars of our time uh, of this era. So brothers and sisters, we're, today we have a very important discussion. The discussion is a lot of young youth who are delving into refutations and wasting their time in things that are not that beneficial. So inshallah, we're going to interview him. And uh, Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsanin ila yawm al-deen. So today on this uh, special Akhi panel, we have our brother Abu Abdul Aziz. MashaAllah, very great to see you. Jazakumullah khair. One of the questions that we had a lot of youth, you know, especially those young youth who start practicing, we feel that many a times uh, since you've been in Saudi Arabia and you've seen the scholars and you've seen the environment here, and uh, I wanted to ask you, like yourself, mm -hmm. what have you seen in terms of when it comes to young people who started practicing the deen? Mm -hmm. And a lot of them, they get very excited on, upon practicing the deen, mm -hmm. and they become very, um, they start refuting a lot, you know, and they say this one's this, this one's that, without any, you know, knowledge. So what would you advise those young people? Uh, in short, Jazakumullah khair. Barakallah feek. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Amma ba'd, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, hopefully these are okay. And in the best of Iman. And subhanAllah, uh, being in Saudi Arabia, being in Riyadh, the scholars, they always emphasize in learning the Quran, memorizing the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking knowledge. You, in order for you to know the haqq, in order for you to know the truth, you need to study, you need to go abroad and sit and learn with the scholars. Alhamdulillah, our ulama, from what I've seen from them, if they're going to refute someone, they're going to refute him once and they'll keep it moving. They won't be talking about refutation every single time. Every time repeating so-and-so is this, so-and-so is that. They always say, whenever, people, whenever they ask them about certain individuals, they say, you know, keep quiet and focus on seeking knowledge. So I believe a lot of the brothers and sisters, when they start practicing, they concentrate so much more on refuting. He said this, he said that. And then the heart becomes hard. And then when the heart becomes hard, eventually this could lead them to stop practicing. And we seek refuge in Allah from this. So my advice to them is, number one, is learn the Qur'an. Memorizing the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's number one. Learning the Tajweed. Number two is seeking knowledge. Going abroad, seeking knowledge, studying with the scholars. If you can't, obviously in your local area with the Tullab al those who want abroad, study with them. And number three, I forgot to mention, is learn the Arabic language. It's very important that you learn the Arabic language. You will never ever learn your religion except after you learn the Arabic language. Without the Arabic language, you won't even be able to scratch the surface. And when it comes to refuting, you guys need to leave it to the senior students of knowledge. Senior, those are older. Those are older. Mm. To the ulama, leave it to the ulama. Not every single Bakr, Amr and Zaid, or every Tom, Dick and Harry should be refuting. But they should leave it to the ulama. And also when it comes, I'm not saying don't refute at all. I'm not trying to close the door of refutation. La, la, la. I didn't say that. I don't want people to misunderstand me. They say, this guy, oh, you know, Reputation is part of our deen. But it needs, it needs hikmah, it needs wisdom. You need to weigh the pros and cons. Masalah al mafasid. You have to say, okay, if I refute him with this, cause more harm than more good. So it's about balancing. And a lot of the time, you should busy yourself with khair instead of qil wa qal and kalam fadi. So, Akhi, Jazakumullah khair. Allah yibarik fiq, Jazakumullah khair. I know that you came to Saudi Arabia. And uh, you know, perhaps when you were in the UK, mm -hmm. uh, they say that uh, many a times those who started practicing, they become very confused. They're very doubtful. Like, mm -hmm. I shouldn't listen. This guy, this guy, this guy. So are you saying that after you traveled all the way from UK and you came all the way to Riyadh and you sat with the scholars, mm -hmm. that had an effect on you? You've seen that what they've, you know, what they did and that really changed your life. Is that exactly how it was, Akhi? Um, I think if you, when you're in your religion, you know the haqq. Once you go abroad and you sit with the scholars, if, if Allah does not facilitate this for you, inshallah you can sit and seek knowledge from the source of knowledge. Those that live in your area 
all those that are on YouTube. Inshallah, we're going to mention a few names. Okay, so I also know that it is from backbiting. You mm -hmm. know, as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, mm -hmm. khaka bima yakrah, no. to say about your brother that which he would not like. Mm -hmm. And this science of refutation is only for the scholars. Mm -hmm. You know, jarh ta'adil and whatnot. So today, if you call a brother an ikhwani mm -hmm. or a uh, sufi or whatever it may be, without having that knowledge, then it's backbiting. Of course, you know, of course, of course. Yeah. If uh, Afwan, sorry to interrupt you. If, for example, you have evidence. Then you know so and so is deviant, no problem. But just because you've seen him on someone that you don't like, or you know from the way he he just looks, you know, uh, deviant, then that's a problem. You know, you need to have clear bayina that a person is an innovator. You can't just, you know, just because like I saw him, you know, taking a picture with this person. Oh no, no, no. And Imam Shatibi, rahimahullah, he said, when does a person become an innovator? A person becomes a mubtad. He becomes an innovator when he goes against the usul of Ahlul Sunnah and Aqeedah in which they refuted Ahlul Sunnah refuted for Ahlul Bid'ah, the people of innovations for example he has Kharij Aqeedah, he has the Aqeedah of the Khawarij or the Aqeedah of the Jahmiyyah or the Aqeedah of the Murji'ah or, 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 or the Aqeedah of the Mu'tazila other than that you have to be very careful I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying close the door, don't refute anyone but learn your religion first busy yourself concern yourself of, with things that is going, that's going to get you close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so akhi, would you say that like the less amount of knowledge you have brings about you to get involved in reputation so what you're telling me right now is if I study the Quran and I start getting into Quran halaqa, and I learn my alif ba ta number one number two if I go and I go to a uh, beneficial classes the more knowledge I get I'm going to become more balanced and I'm going to know how to weigh the different situations is that what you're trying to That's tell what, me akhi? Nah, this is what I'm trying to tell you and they say you're an enemy to something that you don't know so inshallah, the more knowledge you have, the more wise you will be, the more merciful you will have. Uh, you will try to weigh the pros and cons. So a lot of this comes from jahl, from ignorance, number one. comes from ignorance. Uh, number two, comes from lack of tarbiyah, lack of education, lack of education. And number three is the environment that is around, you know. And, you know, I think a lot of people, they have ghira, they have jealousy for the religion. They want to defend the religion of Islam. But how many people, Akhi, they want to do good? But instead of doing good, they do more bad. True. true you see? True, so true. I think, you know, I, I'm not saying, a lot of them are sincere. You know, they want to defend the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you need to defend the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with knowledge. In order for you to refute the battle, you need to know the haqq. In order for you to refute the battle, you have to know the battle. How did Ibn Taymiyyah refute all these deviants? Because he knew that their battle. True, true. So you're, are you going to promise the young people mm -hmm. if they start learning the Quran and they start learning uh, their deen mm -hmm. that things are going to be clear to them and they take exactly from the ulama. Of course, so of course. that's what you're and you're you're saying 100 percent. If no. you do that, everything's going to become no, clear. No. This is just a phase that everybody has to go through. Is yeah, that no, correct? That's correct. No. Okay. Now, last question, inshallah, since we're I running just, out I just of time. Yeah, yeah. Salafi is not just only aqidah. Where is where is your akhlaq? When where is your mannerism? Uh, in your Salafi and your mannerism. Is your akhlaq the akhlaq of the Salaf? How do you deal with the people? Is your ibadah like the Salaf? So, not just only take one part, the aqidah and refutation. No, no, no. We take the whole deen in totality. Do you have the akhlaq of the Salaf? Do you have the ibadah of the Salaf? Do you have the character of the Salaf? No, the luhum ulama masmuma. The flesh of the scholars is poisoned. So before you talk about an alim, ittaqillah, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just because someone so said he's an innovator, make the thabbut. You could be backbiting a scholar or a alim, and Allahumma sta'an, this can, and, 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 and some of the ulama, they say, when a person backbites the scholars, this can be a sub of imtikas, a reason for him to leave his religion. They even said a reason, he can even stop practicing as well. Sorry, Afwan, he can either stop practicing or even leave the religion. Jazakumullah khair. Uh, last question. I want you to name one youth person on YouTube. Mm -hmm. He's a credible individual that people can actually seek knowledge. Who the youth can actually go to? Because of course they can go to a Quran program, mm -hmm. but who can they go to? Just name me one person. And that's it, inshallah. We're going to end off this uh, panel with this one, inshallah. Barakallah fiqh, Habibi. Um, I recommend a uh, sheikh, uh, his name is Mufti Muhammad Munir. 
He's a graduate of the he's a graduate of the Islamic University of Medina, from the in master's program from the Faculty of Hadith. I think the brother is from Philadelphia or New York. He's from America. And mashallah, tabarakallah, he, he has a channel on YouTube called Hadith Disciple. Inshallah, we're going to put it in the bottom, bidna Allah ta'ala. And mashallah, he's very balanced. Uh, someone who's wise, someone of knowledge. Uh, someone who just focuses on, focuses on ilm and tarbiyah. So we're going to leave it at that. Uh, so today with our brother, Abu Abdul Aziz. And he was really aff affected by when he came here to Saudi Arabia. And he saw the scholars like Sheikh Saleh Al-Fawzan and the other ulama who he takes knowledge from. Of course, uh, once you come here, you benefit from them. And inshallah, we leave it at that. We ask everybody to please like, share, and subscribe. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Bukhari TV. Jazakumullah khairan, akhi. Wa barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.